Hello everyone, welcome to session 7 of our Ansys Fluent course for beginners. Today we're going to explore Savinius Vertical Axis Rain Turbines. This is going to be an exciting session where we'll learn how to simulate these type of wind turbines using Ansys Fluent. Throughout this tutorial, we'll be working with some advanced CFT concepts like sliding mesh interfaces and you learn how to create animations of your results. But don't worry. We'll break everything down into manageable steps. Before we dive into our simulation, let's first understand some fundamental concepts about wind turbines. Now let's understand what wind turbines actually are and their main types. Simply put, wind turbines are devices that convert wind's kinetic energy into mechanical energy, which is then converted into electricity. Think about it like this. When you feel the wind pushing against your hand out of a car window, that's kinetic energy. Wind turbines harness this pushing force and turn it into useful power. There are two main types of wind turbines. First, we have horizontal axis wind turbines or HAWTs. These are the traditional windmills you probably picture when thinking about wind turbines. The ones with properly like blades spinning around a horizontal axis, you have likely seen those on wind farms or in open fields. Second, we have vertical axis wind turbines or VAWTs, where the blades rotate around a vertical axis. Imagine a spinning door, but for catching wind. These are the time we'll focus on today, specifically the Savinius design. Let's focus on just vertical axis wind turbines. There are two main types we need to understand the Savinius and the Darius turbines. These vertical axis wind turbines come with some impressive advantages. First, they're not picky about wind direction. They are worked with wind coming from any direction. They're also more compact than their horizontal axis cousins with lower height requirements and they can be installed closer to the ground. Another great feature is their quiet operation which, combined with their compact size, makes them ideal for residential areas and perfect for urban settings. Now let's understand how these two types, I mean Savinius and Darius, differ from each other. The main differences lie in these areas. First of all, their operating principle. Savinius uses drag force, while Darius works on lift force. Their starting behavior is also different. They have different self-starting capabilities. Next, it's for the efficiency rates. Each achieves different levels of performance. Their construction complexity. They vary in how complicated they are to build. And finally, the cost consideration. Both initial and maintenance costs differ. Understanding these differences is crucial as we move forward to focus on the Savinius type, which we'll be simulating today. The Savinius turbine has some unique characteristics that make it stand out. First, it's what we call a drag type turbine with a distinctive S shaped cross section. If you look at it from above, you'll see this S shape that helps it catch the wind effectively. What's great about this design is that it's simple and robust. There aren't many complex parts that can break down. One of its best features is that it's self restarting meaning it can begin rotating at very low wind speeds. You don't need a strong gust of wind to get it going. However, there is a trade-off. Its efficiency is relatively lower, typically ranging between 15 to 20%. Despite this lower efficiency, Savinius turbines are ideal for specific applications. They work particularly well in urban environments where wind conditions can be unpredictable, and also small escape power generation projects like powering individual buildings or small facilities. The simple design and reliable operation make it a practical choice for these applications, even with the lower efficiency rate. In our simulation, we'll see exactly how this S-shaped design interacts with the wind to generate power. My tool uh, object would be rotational zone, but my target body would be a stationary zone. But there is a point in here. Of course, I'm going to chip all and both regions. And this is why I have to change the preserve tool bodies to yes. So let's see what happens if I don't change it. By not preserving the tool body, the rotating zone is just subtracted and it is not what we wanted. 
instead I change it to yes. And this time as I click on generate button, you can see uh, all the bodies are formed. Very well. So it seems that it is generated. And uh, as you can see in here, we've got the denser grid inside especially near the blade region. And you can also see the boundary layer, which is a slab edge from 25 layers as we ordered. And we've got a smooth transition. And this transition from these elements to the bigger ones is very important. And this is where the growth rate option could help us. So this time I want to change the interface S from wall type into interface. So let's see where it is located. There it is. And simply as that, we can turn it to an interface. So right now, as I get back to mesh interfaces box, you would see two interfaces, interface S and R. As soon as you click on them and select them, you will be able to uh, define interface name prefix for it. Uh, I want to just keep the predefined name. Uh, it's in PF and uh, by just clicking on create button, all of these two uh, actually boundaries are merging and considering as an interface right now. A sliding mesh technique is a sophisticated approach in ANSYS Fluent for simulating rotating machinery. This technique is specifically designed for cases where we have rotating parts interacting with stationary components. Think of it like this. In a wind turbine, we have the rotating blades called rotor, and the surrounding area, which stands for a stator. These two parts need to interact properly in our simulation. So this technique finds wide application in very engineering fields. While we're focusing on wind turbines, it's also commonly used in turbo machinery like pumps and compressors, marine propellers, mixing vessels, cooling fans, and aircraft engines. So it will be calculated right on the uh, blade fault. So I simply select this boundary and click on OK. So I will see the Y plus values during the simulation as well. And now you can see that my wind turbine actually rotates for 3052 degrees per second. So considering that, as I mentioned, in most of the references, in each time step, we just pay one degree rotation, uh, we can have and, and divide this value by one. And this will give uh, this much seconds for time steps uh, for the rotation. So from now on, as soon as I use this value for the uh, time step, I can be sure that in each time step, only one degree will be covered. Very well. So the solution is done. And actually, I uh, extended the calculation for more time steps. And you can see the results. In all of the time steps, it reaches convergence and then get to the next uh, actually time step. And, and maybe just uh, it, it just doesn't need uh, 50 iterations to reach the convergence in some of the time steps. Uh, so let's check the contour. This is the contour, the latest one and that was reached. And you can see the last stream around it. We will get to it later. And let's just check the other reports. Uh, the first one is the torque coefficient that you can see over time. And also from monitor section, you can uh, just report the plots and you can see the torque coefficient and Y plus plots are listed. And from here, you can change and the X axis label from flow time to the time step. But I want to keep these settings. And after all, defining a name for this video and click on right button. So it takes a little while for the software to extract and gather around all of these countries together to form a video file, which we call animation. So let's wait for it. Simply as that, you can find another parameters in this drop-down list, such as the pressure. You can see the pressure distribution uh, in this turbine, 7 inch turbine. And same as that, you would follow the other parameters. Don't forget that the minimum and maximum value are shown in here. And uh, aside this uh, contour, you will see a legend bar, which shows in uh, a spectrum. Very well. And simply as that, you may need to follow other parameters like the kinetic energy, 
that can be really important when it comes to power generation. You may just need to skip some of them to have less number of arrows, or you may need to scale. For example, I want them to be twice as the uh, twice bigger than as it was. Very well. So I guess uh, we covered the seven years turbine and uh, all of the specifications regarding the sliding mesh technique, uh, the transient flow and transient solver simulation, and uh, how we can uh, actually extract an animation video out of these uh, simulations, the time steps specifications, and many other things regarding the simulation.